is a Cougar Sports. Now, before we continue, I do have to wear some eye protection because this is pretty much an open car, but I have come prepared because you see, this is a car that calls for the Biggles goggles. Oh yes. There. That's much better. Oh yes. Now for a lot of people, a Cougar might mean Samantha from Sex and the City, but not for Rick Stevens. He had an idea of creating the perfect sports car, and it's a company that he's been involved with more or less all the time from its inception in the late 70s. The formula really is simple. Classic Jaguar 1960s or 70s running gear, usually a straight six engine of some sort with Jaguar gearbox, and then attached to a custom chassis with a fiberglass body. Really, not much more to it. But what a body this is. It's absolutely gorgeous. It looks stunning from inside and out. It doesn't have the outright composure or hoonability of a Cobra or something like that, but it is very, very special. The amount of love this thing gets is absolutely unbelievable. And it makes a lot of noise. Most of it from up there actually. But twin SUs feeding this 4.2 litre straight six. And when you put your right foot down, you can just hear it taking in gobs of air. It's marvelous. It's actually pretty comfortable too. Chassis and suspension clearly set up more for enjoying broken roads than beating them into submission. At £40,000 for this exact car, it's actually reasonably decent value too if you compare it with something like, say, a Morgan three-wheeler. Feels a little bit more generously spaced in here than the Morgan, although only by a little bit. The lever itself, actually very nice. And the action's really positive too, quite a surprise and never a given with this type of car. Honestly though, although it might look like the sort of thing where you really want to hammer it down this kind of road, it's just wrong. You want to take the Biggles goggles off and you want to put the John Lennons on. Much better. Now I'm enjoying this car properly. Yes, this is the way to do it. Cruising at 30, 40 mile an hour and feeling still like the absolute king of the road. Oh yes. Now this is, as I said earlier, another one of the vehicles from the good people at Total Head Turners. And it's really an example of why I love working with those guys so much. As a fairly dedicated petrol head, I love nosing around their selection, which rotates at a shockingly fast rate. I take equal parts frustration and delight in seeing cars they have that I absolutely cannot identify. I just really, really enjoy being inducted into these new, weird and wonderful cars. And the world of kit cars is quite an exciting one, really. The car has ample, if not face-ripping performance. There is an overdrive down here, which you can engage and disengage, meaning the four-speed really, I guess, is technically a five, I suppose. Doesn't seem to make the biggest of difference, if I'm honest, engaging the overdrive. In fact, it makes no difference to the revs. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but honestly, I don't care. I'm just enjoying the car. It's a shame it's a little bit drizzly and grey out there, otherwise I'd be enjoying this a hell of a lot more. Not sure what passengers would think, because even though I've got this little bit of perspex in front of me, which looks stunning, it's still quite blustery, as you can probably both see and hear. Now, I do apologise if the sound and vision quality isn't what you normally expect from me, but I'm doing my best. Suction mounts and things don't really like curved surfaces, and as you can probably tell, this is quite a curvy car. Of 
course, the joy of any sort of kit vehicle is you can build it very much to your own specifications. But I must be honest, I think I would be very, very hard pressed to improve on this absolutely stunning combination of a sort of maroon chocolatey exterior with all the chrome bright work and this gorgeous, very high quality tan leather interior. Really a marvelous thing indeed. There is the possibility of putting a V12 in something like this, but honestly, the 4.2 already provides ample power. It's much more enjoyable with the four-speed manual. Most of the V12s come with an auto. And I think you just ruin the ride unnecessarily by making the car too heavy. The thing weighs less than a thousand kilos. And honestly, some kit cars, and things, particularly the Cobras, they have a level of performance which is very much in keeping with a modern car. This doesn't. It all feels about right. The steering, the brakes, the throttle, everything, they all kind of match up pretty well. You've got to set your mind back a good few decades and then you're really going to enjoy it. It's a Sunday morning car. I want the road to myself because you'll feel like you're going a million mile an hour and then you'll realize like I am that you're doing 45 and you don't know where that tail back behind you came from. I do rather love this car. If I'm being totally honest, the, the driving element of it isn't so much for me. I want something with a, a little bit more ability. But I think I'd buy one and not even put an engine in it because I just like looking at it. It's absolutely gorgeous. And if you're the sort of person for whom you'd have a Cobra, but the idea of a big shouty American V8 seems a bit over the top, seems a bit unnecessary. You could do a lot worse than one of these and they're still in production. This one's nearly new. It was only registered last year, which is fantastic. And I'll probably do it sooner rather than later because as is the case with a lot of these things, the donor vehicles that were once so commonplace and so affordable are now relatively hard to find. So there you have it, the Cougar Sports, something genuinely quite different and an awful lot of fun. <laughs> As always, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you all for the next one. Bye bye! Woo!